sound speeds. And if the internet has taught us one thing, it is that the world is experienced differently by different people and that we all have our own opinions about the things that we experience online. This is occasionally put to the test on things like the dress. Do you see a white and gold dress or do you see a black and blue dress? Well, there's difference of opinions all over the place. And some people swear that it is white and gold. And some people swear that the dress was black and blue. Which one did you? Well, let's not get into that. There are various things like this online, and all of them ask your opinion based on something that you experience. And the one that I'm specifically going to be talking about this is, of course, related to sound. Here is a sound bite of something that you can find on the internet right now. And I want you to tell me, which do you hear? The name Yanni or the name Laurel? Listen to it. Laurel. Listen again. Laurel. This is something that is online all over the place. And if you do a search for Yanni with a Y or Laurel, then chances are you're going to come across this. And it came from a robotic voice saying the word Yanni or Laurel, depending on how you hear it. And you get to kind of put together the rest of it. If you've explored the Soundspeed video archive in the past, I'm sure you've heard me say that listening is a unique experience. The way that something sounds to me may sound differently to you. And there's many different factors for that, but I'll get into it. If I listen to a microphone and I say, I really like the way this thing sounds, you might not like it. You may say it doesn't sound good at all to me, but I may listen to these headphones and say, these are perfect. I love these things. And you may say, oh gosh, uh, no, 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 no. I've heard those. Those are garbage. I don't like them at all. I prefer this one instead. That's because the way you hear is different based on things that you've experienced and based on the shape of your ears, based on how you experience the world. For example, how are you listening to my voice right now? Are you watching through your smartphone? Are you listening through earbuds? Are you listening through over ear headphones? Are you listening in your car? Are you listening on a television in your living room and it's quiet? Are you listening on the same television in your living room, but people are eating in the next room over and you keep having to crank it up to hear over them? Are you listening in your studio environment with a 5.1 surround sound system calibrated to THX standards? Because depending on the experience that you are having right now while watching this video, I could sound great or there may be something in my voice you don't like. The way that you hear sound is shaped by many different factors. Let's start with an obvious one, the shape of the ear. My ear is shaped like this, but if I lost my ear in a house fire or my ear was closer to my head or stuck out farther from my head, it would sound different just like it would if the ridges and bumps on my ear were shaped differently. Depending on all of these different factors and more, that's going to affect the way that you hear sound. If I constantly were playing the guitar and wore an earplug in this ear, but not one in this ear, the balance that I hear between sound stereoscopically is going to totally change. The experiences that you've had in your life also affect the way that you hear sound, believe it or not. For example, if you went away to war and your life depended on your ability to hear some little tiny sound over a big mechanical noise outside, like for example, the sound of someone creeping up on you, then you could have a heightened sense of that frequency range because your life depended on it. If you're a mother and you have a newborn child, you're going to be tuned to more higher frequency sounds and that could also affect the way that you hear. If you've ever worked in a warehouse and there's loud machinery all around you but you've not taken proper care of your ears through either earplugs or noise canceling earmuffs then chances are you've lost some of the frequency range you were born with. Human hearing is typically between about 20 and 20,000 hertz and the first frequencies you lose are in the higher end. So usually you'll go from about 20,000 hertz down to 19,000 to 18,000, 17,000, 16,000 and by the time you hit your 50s or 60s you may may only be able to hear from 15,000 or maybe even less or below. It depends completely on the experiences you've had in your life. If you shoot a gun routinely or are somehow involved in loud music and you've not worn some sort of ear protection, chances are you've lost a lot of your hearing and you don't even know you've lost it. If you work as an electrician and constantly near buzzing sources or you work as a network administrator and you're always inside the server room with the fans blasting, then chances are you fall into one of a few different categories. You are either listening to those sounds because they affect the way that you do your job. Maybe it drives you nuts or maybe it's something that you need to hear because it would indicate a problem if it wasn't there. Maybe your pulvinar nuclei inside of your brain is filtering out all those sounds and you no longer hear them. Or maybe you just have tinnitus and you can't hear them at all. Whatever the case may be, it's going to affect your listening experience. If you live in a loud, noisy apartment in New York City where there's a big air conditioning vent right outside your window, 
then you may not be able to do anything about it except tune it out. And that will affect the way that you hear things as well because it's still there and affecting your hearing, maybe even causing hearing loss, despite the fact that you're not necessarily dialed in on it anymore. Another thing to note is that you do not hear all frequencies within your hearing range at the same volume. You may hear as low as here and as high as here, but if you're listening in the middle, you're going to be more in tune to those frequencies and hear them better than you will the frequencies more on the outer edges of your hearing range. This also does mean that as you start to lose some of this range, you will hear sounds differently because that middle area will change. All these factors and more will affect the way that you hear sound. But now let's get back to the topic at hand. Yanni or Laurel? Which do you hear? Well, we're going to go into candid mode here, and I'm going to sit in front of my computer and walk through a few things to demonstrate why you may be hearing what you hear. Let's start by playing this video once through. That way you get an idea of the way it sounds online. Laurel. Laurel. That's the way the video sounds completely untouched and unprocessed of any kind. That's the way it sounds online. Now, there is background noise in it. It doesn't sound great. It's basically raw vocal frequencies. There's no real overtones or anything playing in, in here. But if you really wanted to, you could dial out the, vo the, the, the background noise and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that for this video. We're just going to take this file and manipulate it. And when I say manipulate it, I'm going to, first of all, do a down mix. Down mix turn it into a mono file. Then I'm going to boost it up 12 dB. I could boost it more than that, but I think it's going to get our point across just by doing it that much. And I'm going to try not to kill you guys by letting you hear this sound too much, but we're going to hear it a few times right now. Laurel, 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 Laurel. Okay, I'm sure you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. It's going to be very annoying listening to that over and over again. Yes, you're right. It will be. So I'll try to make this interesting. Now the program I'm, I'm using is Reaper and inside of Reaper there are various different effects you can add and the one I'm going to be using for this video is called Curve EQ. It's by Voxingo. If you go to Voxingo.com you can get a license for this or download the trial. I really love the Curve EQ plugin so much that after using the trial I said you know what I really want to try to get this fully licensed. And I was going to buy it, but then I reached out to them and said, would you be willing to give me one for purposes of education through sound speeds? And they said, absolutely. So thank you so much, Vox & Go, for sending me a license and allowing me to share Vox & Go Curve EQ with you guys. So let's start by setting it up a little bit here. I'm going to, first of all, go into our settings and I'm going to change this to center. That way it's going to center out the spectrum in the middle of the screen. So as I hit play, okay, you also see that it started to average out over time. The reason for this is it's set to average mode right there. The reason I left it in this average mode is because I'm going to smooth it over and show you. There are two main peaks that happen in this sound bite. It is right here, starting at about 132 hertz, going up to around about 100, uh, about 630, and that's the main peak. Now, it does build up, and it does drop around there, you know, uh, on either side of that, and it drops as low as about, you know, 1.78 kilohertz there before boosting back up to around 3.6 and then dropping all the way down to 10K, where it dies. Now, I'm going to remove the smoothing, and we're going to really get into it. Now, I'm going to also turn it into active regular mode. So it's not going to be an average mode. It's going to constantly recycle. And I'm not going to have it kind of average itself over two seconds. I'm going to have it set to recycle itself every hundred. So it's going to average only every hundredth of a second together. Larry, 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 Larry. There we go. Okay, so now let's get into this. And this is going to be really cool. As, you, as you're looking at the screen, I want you to notice that the equalization curve is pretty well, you know, it's even. It's flat right now, straight across the middle. If I grab this and bring it all the way down to the very bottom, I'm essentially dropping all frequencies by a certain amount. So it's going to do an overall attenuation. Let's listen to it. Larry, Larry, Larry. Now, what that's going to allow me to do is when I start to play with the equalization, going to dial in on just a few of these. Let me let me make a few right here. Little bumps. And that way we have a few points that's going to help us to really dial in on this sound the way that you're going to hear it. 
So let's check this out. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because as I grab one center point and start to adjust, you see how it's kind of skipping back and forth between them all? I'm going to do this with a new point. That way, hopefully, we'll be able to see this spike right here. Not just the curve itself that I'm adjusting, but you see the peak and the equalization in the background there, how it's starting to raise certain frequency ranges as I start to uh, pull it across. Right as I do this, you're going to hear it kind of stair step, and I, I do want that. That otherwise, I would do it as a smooth transition. I just smooth this whole thing out. But I want you to really notice as I hit play here. I'm going to start at the bottom. Listen. Laurel, 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 are you noticing along with me that as I bring that little peak up and across the equalization, as certain frequencies are boosted and cut, you hear it transition back and forth between Yanni and Laurel. Depending on your ears, you may hear it at certain points. So I try to go over a range of frequencies for you to really dial in on that. But hopefully you were able to hear it transition up and down. That it started maybe sounding like Yanni, and then as I made it, maybe started to adjust a little bit deeper, it started sounding more like Laurel. Same thing, vice versa. It may have been as I transitioned higher, it started to sound more like Yanni to you when it originally sounded like Laurel. It could also work the other way around. Depending on the frequency ranges that you dialed in on originally, just with your natural hearing and the way that your brain processes sound, it's going to basically color the way that you hear that word because I'm changing the equalization. Let's do it one more time. So were you able to hear it? I want to know what your thoughts are. Write it down in the description down below. Now, people online, you'll sometimes people do a, you'll sometimes hear about people doing a pitch shift, and it's basically doing the same thing. It's allowing the center of the voice to change a little bit, going up and down, maybe fluctuate a little bit within an octave or two. And that's the same kind of thing as what we're doing here. It's not actually a pitch shift. It's depending on the equalization. That's really going to help you hear it. You can hear it fine on a pitch shift, and I don't necessarily think I need to demonstrate it because I just showed you through equalization. That's really where it's at. What'd you think? Pretty interesting, huh? Hopefully you were able to hear both Yanni and Laurel as I manipulated the equalization. But if not, sorry, I'm only able to hear Laurel without playing with the equalization myself. However, I would like to give a shout out real quick to Voxing Go. Thank you so much for giving me a license for the Curve EQ plugin. It's a really awesome one, and you're going to see me really dive in deeper and showcase it much more in other videos. But for right now, thank you for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds and tune into more episodes in the future where we explore more things, have fun, and of course, there's more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.